Hi, and welcome on News Now, Belmont Journal, news show and community update. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Today we have with us Patrice Garvin, Belmont Town Administrator, to talk about the newsletter she sent out a month ago, a communication to residents in general and future projects people should keep an eye on. Patrice, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. In late June, the town clerk's office sent an email by um, created by your service. And the newsletter said, in the words of um, improving the communication to residents, uh, which triggers some questions. How did you use to communicate before? So communication from the town um, administration to the residents and the town meeting members of the community has been a challenge over the past few years. Um, COVID has made it a little bit much more in, in regards to being online and remote communication. Um, we did see through the COVID uh, pandemic that there were more and more people attending meetings that they weren't necessarily meeting, uh, attending before, uh, given the remote capability. Um, I think sometimes with communication or the same communication that you try over and over again, which is um, maybe a tweet or select board meetings or any informative meetings such as that, it becomes semi white noise. People don't really hear it because it's the same way that you're delivering the information. Um, so we're always looking for ways to communicate to the public. With social media, um, sometimes it's, it's hard for the town to get ahead of, of the message and the narrative. Um, so we've been trying really hard to try and get more information out there. Bulletin is a way to kind of change the form of how we communicate to the residents um, on a monthly basis to let them know um, important public forums, dates of public meetings, things like that, that we think they should tune into. And also what's on the select board's plate coming up and what they'll be looking at, what they're focusing on. And just other things that are going on within the community that we feel that the residents should know about. So we're constantly trying to improve that communication. It, it can be challenging, um, especially with the short staff that we have in, in my office in particular. It's, it's an area that it's, it's a nice to have. Um, and we also, I think last fall, we put um, an informational type uh, flyer in the tax bills to explain to the residents why their tax bill is reflected the way it is. So we're, we're trying different ways to um, get the message out. Great. What will be the regularity on these newsletters? So the bulletin I hope to do once a month. At the beginning of each month, I'd like to put something out. Sometimes some of the information might be redundant um, because the public hearings that we identify in the future, it's just good to keep reminding people that it's coming up. Um, sometimes things take a little longer to bake um, in terms of a project. So that's something that will be shown as the process or the progress of that project um, kind of goes over time. So I'm hoping to have a monthly update um, to the residents and town meeting members. As we get close to a town meeting, an annual town meeting or a fall town meeting, the bulletin will most likely reflect what's going on at that town meeting, that upcoming town meeting. During the pandemic, the government Zoom meetings have multiplied opportunities to participate for the public. Do you think that's going to change in the upcoming months or you will keep that, that option? So the governor's order for remote meeting participation has been extended to April of 2022. We fully expect that most of the, the boards and the committees will continue to use this option. The select board has committed to meeting in person with a hybrid option meaning that either the board members themselves or the public can communicate remotely through the Zoom um, through the Zoom technology. So we are committed to continuing that. I also know a survey went out from the town clerk's office to ask town meeting members whether or not they preferred an in-person or a remote town meeting. So we are continuing um, service uh, to the members of the community. Great, how does that impact your work? Um, so remote meetings back in March when the pandemic first started, we, we realized that we should capitalize on the Zoom technology, that we wanted to continue boards and committees, where some towns just kind of suspended the meetings of boards and committees. We felt that we really wanted to have their work continue. This town relies heavily on its volunteers. So we realized really early on in the pandemic that we wanted to continue. 
Um, it did create some in additional administrative work in regards to adding Zooms, but I think most people are pretty um, familiar now with the technology. It's been running really well. Yes. Uh, now, if you don't mind, we would like to ask questions about the content of the newsletter. Sure. The first one has three parts, the public forums and in input sessions, select board initiatives and full town meetings, which is very helpful to understand how people can participate. Mm -hmm. In the public forum and input part, uh, we can find the, find the federal um, emergency aid. Franklin Tucker, the Belmontonian, reported that the final number might not be what we were expecting. And the Boston Globe also reported that the government disagree on the timeline. Um, can you tell us what um, any update on this? Sure. So since this year, when the Federal Aid Act was signed, we were told by the state that this was preliminary information, that they were preliminary numbers. We knew that we would be getting some funding in, uh, but the timing and the information was slowly coming out. I can report that the town did receive $1.3 million on July 1st. We received our first allocation of what, what the federal government calls the direct municipal aid portion of the $7.8 million that we're supposed to um, have come into the town. There is another al allocation called county um, allocation. That is something that the county that we're in, which is Middlesex, applies to, to the federal government. And that's about $5 million. We have no additional information on that money. Um, that we should expect it to come in, but we're not exactly sure when that would be and how much. Again, when we first were applying, um, looking at this money and looking at ways to potentially use it in FY22, we knew that this was preliminary. We knew that it, nothing was um, guaranteed. So we really had to budget um, conservatively. We had to make sure that none of the federal aid money was included in the FY22 budget. And after we know the amount that we're going to receive, we will have a public uh, recommendation, right? So we have on August 18th, we are having a public forum to talk about the needs in the community in, in and around COVID. Uh, the schools have specific needs in, in regards to COVID. The town has some as well. So it's really uh, an opportunity for the public to put in what, what their ideas of money should be spent. Uh, the federal government has categories as to this money. There's water and sewer. There is affordable housing, there's business aid, there's things like that. This is an opportunity for the public to really speak to how they feel the money should be prioritized. And that's what the August 18th meeting will, will end up. Also, the Finance Task Force recommended the creation of Finance Director position, yep. uh, which you are supporting this idea, right? Yep. What will that change? What is the Finance Director does that a Budget Director doesn't? Sure. So the finance director, I just wanted to be clear, this is not additional headcount within the community. This is the um, adding to the existing budget director position. Director position uh, formally would help um, and assist me in creating the operating budget, really just kind of working with the budget from the uh, beginning of the fiscal year to the end. Um, it would be that position was um, in charge of really working with me to kind of get all of our ducks in a row as we work with the department heads to create the uh, upcoming fiscal year budget. A finance director's position is a little bit more advanced than a budget director. It's somebody that is going to be able to go to uh, meetings to really explain um, the budget and, and how it works from, from soup to nuts. It's somebody that will be a centralized um, finance person for all of the departments in town, including the schools. This person is envisioned to work with the town accountant, the town treasurer, my office in particular, um, to really get a, a foothold of, of the finances in town. Are you already in the hiring process? So we are in the process of creating a job description. And once that job description is finalized, we will advertise the position. Another hot topic is the fuel tanks. The town will go back to town meeting in November with a possible new design, and there's a public input session on August 3rd. Can you tell us what this session will be for? So after the failure of the fuel tank um, article or the capital um, funds for that, for the additional um, estimate of the fuel tanks, 
um, we kind of reassessed and regrouped in terms of <clears throat> what needed to be done. I, I can't, I, what I do is to bring in the community development director, Glenn Clancy, um, to kind of take a fresh look at it. Glenn wasn't involved in the first round of this process. I felt Glenn, given his uh, tenure in the town and the things that he does, he might be able to take a, a really clean slate look. And that's exactly what he has done. So August 3rd is, is an opportunity to do a reset, um, to look at all the options on the table of how to solve the fuel tank um, replacement. We feel that the general consensus is the fuel tanks will need to be removed at some point in time. Um, it's the replacement solution that seems to be in dispute. And we're hoping um, through meet this meeting and, and subsequent meetings to really um, identify a solution that is the best solution for the town of Belmont. All right, there are numerous other projects like the ice, uh, ice rink. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that one? So we had put out an RFP, uh, I wanna say a year and a half ago, it was before COVID, um, that was approved by the school committee and the select board. We put out an RFP, we received one bid. We worked with the uh, bidder to kind of work with the town to kind of make sure that the town was getting what it needed and the developer was getting what they needed. Uh, unfortunately, that process um, did not end in a, in a success, successful award to that bidder. Uh, the bidder withdrew. So from that point, we decided internally that we needed to re, re-figure out how to go about um, moving the project forward. Sometimes when um, a project is um, stops, it can have the danger of not continuing. And one of the things I've always make sure is that something's moving in a project. It doesn't have to move continuously or it doesn't have to move rapidly. It just has to continue. So people can, you know, have faith in a process that this, this project is not something the town has just put aside and moving on to other things. So we internally worked on um, working with the school building committee, with the schools to try and figure out how to lay out that site. It seemed that where we got stuck with the bid process was how the site is going to be laid out and then how and where on that site the rink will go. So we brought an update to the annual town meeting and the select board just recently um, created a committee to look at financing the rink. The school committee voted on a scheme. It's scheme two of Perkins and Will. We hired Perkins and Will to do um, the site layout work. The school committee uh, adopted scheme two, and now that scheme two is going to this committee and the committee is going to look at ways to fund the project. Another project that uh, Belmont is working uh, is the diversity task force. Mm -hmm. Do you have any update on that? Sure, so I am a sitting member of that committee. Uh, it's a committee uh, made up of people around the community that are invested in uh, making the town more inclusionary and diverse. I know that the committee is to present recommendations to the select board uh, soon. Uh, I believe their charge is up in uh, October, sometime in October. So this is um, a very active committee and they will be hopefully be giving the select board their recommendations uh, within the next four or five months. All right, and the other one is the replacement of January roof that um, you also mentioned in the newsletter. Yep. So fall town meeting, um, we're still working to see if, if there will be a fall town meeting where we've identified two dates, uh, November 9th, Tuesday, November 9th. And then if a second night is needed, uh, Tuesday, November 16th. So in the newsletter or the bulletin, I put in possible topics. One was the fuel tanks and the next one is the Chenery roof. Uh, Tony, the chair of the capital budget committee mentioned at the annual town meeting that this will be something that would be coming forward, uh, the Chenery roof. Um, as you know, there are a lot of town-owned buildings in town. Uh, they are aging. They are in need of repair and maintenance and upkeep. Uh, the roof um, is something that has been identified as something that is um, something that needs to be addressed. And we'll have to see what the work of the Capital Budget Committee does um, between now and town meeting. Anything you want to add or another public meeting you want to highlight? highlight? Um, so... Again, I think the August 3rd meeting of the fuel tanks, um, I just to give a plug to the um, Belmont Light, uh, I, there is a public hearing July 26th to talk about use rates, um, time of use rates. So I believe that's July 26th. Um, 
16th is the forum on the, the federal uh, aid uh, through COVID. So, um, and then once the fall hits, I mean, usually the fall is pretty busy. This is the summertime, so it slows down a little bit. So in my September newsletter will most likely be just a lot of dates regarding uh, public forums in September and October. So the community will be very interested in these newsletter. How can they sign up? So we will be posting them online, sending them out to town meeting reps. Um, we, I actually am in communication with um, members of the community and ways to get the, the bulletin out. Some people have rec um, volunteered to put it on Facebook and kind of get it through that cycle. So we are working to generate a way to get that out to all the residents. All right. Thank you so much. It has been really nice to meet you and interview you. you. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you have, have been watching. Thank you. You have been watching News Now. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal. See you next time.